So what I'll do is I'll talk about common goals for advocacy and just some points to, for everybody to think about as we sort of go forwards. So I think when we start off, you know, we talk about uh, what are we trying to achieve? You know, are we trying to just have to achieve, uh, trying to achieve improved health? Are we the only people who can do that? And are, most importantly, are we the right people? So, you know, we, we start off with the right intentions, but that doesn't make necessarily us the right people who can do the advocacy and the championing. So it's important to think about that when we start off. I always talk about this, which is important. Okay, we need to have self-management, peer support, access to healthcare professionals. Three big pillars to improve diabetes care, type one, type two. Well, let's talk about type one in this context, but these are the three pillars we want to tackle. And this is what we like to do. So if you look at countries which are in that space, we can talk about, uh, you know, how do we improve uh, better access to technology, better insulin, uh, people talking to each other, better healthcare professionals, and that's all okay. But before that, I think the global advocacy sits here. It's about access to basics. So when we, for example, in the UK, we sit back and we have a, what I call sometimes a bit of a, an understandably so, we have a first world problem, which is we'll have people coming to us and saying, uh, Partha, I don't have the G7. I'm just getting the Libra, which is absolutely right in the context of where we are as a country. But then you flip it around and you take it to, let's say, parts of villages of India where all these work that you have done, Archida, people will, the conversation is of a different planet altogether, which is we need our insulin, right? So, and I think that's where the sort of, like, that doesn't mean by any means that progress should stop in other countries. There should happen what their advocacy has achieved, where their investment has achieved, what their health system has achieved. And I don't believe in this thing that a lot of people say is that, oh, you should not have this because other countries don't have that. That is the wrong approach. The approach should be, we should learn from the countries which have done that. How have they got to their position that they can have a discussion about uh, where we are about the technology? How is it that they have a health system which is different? So what do we need? We need data. Uh, to convince advocacy as accurate as much as possible. So recently, JDRF have done a piece of work which talks about it. Uh, my first instinct at looking at it, that it seems to underestimate the number of people with type 1 in India. That's my first instinctive reaction looking at it, uh, having come from India. Um, I, but it's a piece of work which has started the ball rolling. It started people think that there is X number of people. My guesstimate is probably underestimates it by a factor of six or seven times, at least. And that's because, but that will get better as data gets more accurate. And that's probably the most important thing you can do for advocacy, which is get data. You encourage all your colleagues to collect data. Uh, and then once you've got data, you can then do the next steps of the advocacy. How much insulin are we talking about, you know, to try and save lives? How much strips are we talking about to save lives? And then what impact can we show of the above? And I think that's quite important when doing advocacy because no advocacy can happen without data. And I can tell you this. So in the in the UK, uh, yes, we have a good uh, system, NHS, etc. But our outcomes are not great in many conditions. But in diabetes, we don't do badly. The simple reason for that is we got data. We can go and sit down and go like this is the number. This is the data. This is the number of people. So, for example, Stephen is doing a lot of work. He's on the call with the immunotherapy. So we have got an estimate. So we look at the research that's coming through and we sort of go around and say, how many people could be eligible? We know how many people could be eligible. We know how many people fit in. The research is happening, etc. So it's easier to do the estimation of costs when you're doing the advocacy, which is what you need. And key are important factors. And I think these are very important. Health system, how you develop your health system is very important. And I'm going to mention politicians because I know politicians, a lot of people switch us off, switch, switch us off and say, oh, politicians. But without politicians, you can't impact change. And I think it's important to remember, you can't just turn around and say, I don't, I don't like politicians. And or uh, as a lot of advocates, a lot of doctors say, we don't do politics. We just do the work. Um, yes, you do. Of course we do. We do the work for the person in front. But without the politics, you can't open up it to more other more people than who you just see in front. Because for all of us, it's very, you know, we will obviously try and do the best for the person who comes to see us in clinic, in front, etc. But wider impact can only happen when you go to politicians, you talk about the data, you talk about the money. And you have a joined up working and India have got a or other countries now are coming together when you've got lots of people with the same mindset coming together. And that's important. That's very important that you don't have different strategies coming from one place. I think once that happens, politicians need something very simple, which is show me the data, show me a joined up approach, show me the benefit it brings through and 
Of course, what is the impact for them in a political sphere? These are all very important if you want them to invest in a particular condition or a particular area. And then finally, you also need big role models from the community. And we are, uh, you know, as, as I say to a lot of my patients, uh, recently we have had a case whereby one school has said that um, they don't have time to train themselves up in technology. So the child cannot come to school. So immediately we have pointed out that well, you can become the prime minister of a country, you can become a cricket World Cup winning captain, you can become a Champions League football winner with type 1 diabetes and your school can't provide training. I'm sorry, but that's just not an acceptable position. So you have to do that, etc. But you need those role models from the community to step up and say, yes, we have type one or type two and hasn't stopped us from doing what we do. And I think that's an important bit, which also resonates with politicians when they see that these are big figures. So role models are very important as we're doing advocacy in that space. And, you know, in a global context, that's why there is a position of what Nick Jonas and others brings. Right. You know, you can be a successful pop star, type one diabetes. He talks about it. Um, the world number two in tennis, Zerev, he's got type 1 diabetes, he talks about it. And I think that's important for, it puts it out on the global market. We have Kate Moss's daughter walking the ramp with type 1 diabetes. These are all little bits, but they make a difference because it resonates to the politician. They can see those public figures. So what do you do when you're talking about advocacy? You need a mixture of emotions and tactics. You need personal stories. Uh, personal stories are very important as we do. And, you know, Achana, for example, you've done a fantastic work about what you do. But the personal stories are very important. The health messages as to what the impact it leaves on their lives. A raising of awareness is a big thing. And lots of people go like, diabetes, oh, you just eat less cakes and be fine. Well, it's not relevant in the context of type 1. It's not even right in the overall context of type 2. But I think that's what we need to get across. And it's not like, you know, in the UK, we're sitting here and we've sorted it. Our headlines are still full of people about how we just need to uh, make people slimmer and everything will go. Away. So that's not going to work either. So and finally, uh, a few other things with negotiations with industry are absolute key part of advocacy. You have to sit down. Lenovo, Lily, Sanofi, Roche, all of them. And we do that. And I think the important bit there is, so when people say, I don't want to engage with the industry or I don't want to engage with politicians, well, I can absolutely assure you, then you have, then you cannot move the dial. You just can't. Though, you know, however much you dislike them, as, as there is a saying loosely translated from uh, India, which basically says that at the end of the, you know, we say that, you know, um, which simply put means that don't worry about the tree. You want the mango, we'll get you a nice mango. Have it. How the tree came about, don't worry about it. So I think that's an important thing. If you want to get to that point that you want everybody to have you know, proper access to insulin strips, etc., then you need to have tactics, which involves engaging with people who you may not be comfortable with. So that's important. And then when you get there in a country which has got difficulty in getting progress, you need to prioritize. You need to think about who will benefit the most. Because at the moment, in lots of countries, what is happening? So there will be parts of India whereby people will have the G7 and the closed loops, right? And there will also be parts of India where people are dying because they don't have insulin at diagnosis. So the prioritization from the government quite understandably will have to be at the second bit, which is getting insulin, getting strips, making keeping people alive, the basics of stuff. So And that's always the big thing. And uh, I've been very fortunate enough to have some amazing colleagues and friends and you've done lots of national projects. But my advice always is start small. Never start too big. If you go out and go like, I want to get everybody insulin strips or insulin and strips. It's such a big project. You start in some areas, work up some villages, slowly show the progress and go forwards. So I'll finish with this. And I always say this. And uh, over the last fair few years, I've had the fortune of engaging with a lot of professionals, a lot of advocates from around the globe. Uh, people with type 1 diabetes, people who are interested in type 1 diabetes, clinicians, scientists, academics. And it is incredibly heartening to see all of them come together, patient charities. And I think, as I said about industry, as I said about politicians, they need to be together as part of the same pack if you want to do global advocacy in my book. So I'll finish with this quote, you know, about going alone and uh, going far and going together. So that's very important in my book. So remember those few things um, and uh, hopefully that helps give us an overview and at ISPAD, we have talked about this uh, a lot. We are again going to IDF next week, uh, week after, whenever it is. And uh, we'll be talking about this again as well. So those are the sort of overviews from my end. So I'll finish there and uh, any questions or whatever, maybe. Thank you. Thank you so much.